Tēnā koutou, hello everyone from around the country and around the world. Welcome to this video about the full moon in Scorpio. It is an eclipse and it's coming up in New Zealand time early on Saturday morning, 5.30 in the morning and different times if you're in other parts of the world. It's interesting that this full moon eclipse takes place on the day of the coronation of the new King Charles. Maybe they chose that time deliberately, maybe they didn't. My name is Fiona Ingram of sunandmooncalendar.nz and I'm presenting astrology from the point of view of New Zealand Aotearoa or the Southern Hemisphere. If you like this video please like, comment or subscribe. Let's get into the Scorpio full moon eclipse. So the full moon in Scorpio with the eclipse takes place at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday the 6th of May. At the time of the eclipse at 5.30 on the Saturday morning, the moon will be still above the horizon in the west and the sun will be below the horizon in the east. This is New Zealand, roughly the time for New Zealand Aotearoa. We might see a faint shadow over the moon at the time of the eclipse. I don't think we'll see much more than that because it's not a very, very strong eclipse in terms of its totality. At the time of the eclipse, wherever you are in the world, Pluto will be roughly halfway between the moon and the sun. Okay, and this is going to be significant because Pluto is squaring the nodes, the lunar nodes, this for much of this year, and that's going to add to some of the karmic intensity of the eclipses. So from the point of view of New Zealand, if we were to look to the north at the time of the eclipse, Pluto would be to the north if you had an extremely powerful telescope. <laughs> it's very far, very small. And then the moon will set at around 7.30 in the morning. Jupiter will be visible before that if you like getting up early and you like to see things before the sun rises. So Jupiter is coming up before the sun these days, probably visible around 7. There is a map showing a very rough graphic of the eclipse area. And if you remember the map that I did, also rough, for the solar eclipse, a couple of weeks ago you might remember that it was a much smaller area covered and that's because lunar eclipses tend to be visible over much wider areas than solar eclipses. Now a little bit of a comment about the time of the year that we're in if we're in the southern hemisphere and Aotearoa or New Zealand. We are coming to the end of the solar year with just a month or so left before winter solstice. A bit more than just a month, okay. So Matariki, the prow of the great waka in the sky, the waka arangi, has already set, had its he heliacal setting. And the stern of that waka that is uh, in the form of Totoru or Orion's belt. And that is now kind of tipped over as that waka is going down. Actually, I should go that way. <laughs> as the waka is going down. And the waka is going along collecting the souls from the year, the things and the people that we need to say goodbye to as we come to the end of our solar year. So just be aware that we're coming into that, that the quietness before the change, even though of course life still goes on, but it's good to be aware of this really big part of our year and our seasons as we come down to the quiet of winter and the winter solstice and the turnaround that that brings. And if you want to know more information about Te Waka Arangi and Māori astronomy in general, uh, there are plenty of experts of tohunga writing and speaking about it, but particularly Dr Rangi Matamua, as many of you will be aware, and I've got links to some of his work in the description below. Returning now to Western tropical astrology. I'm always interested in how we can apply astrology from the Western tradition to our country here and the Southern Hemisphere, but also how it fits in with indigenous systems of knowledge of astronomy and astrology. So according to Western Tropical Astrology, this full moon lunar eclipse takes place smack in the middle of the sign of Scorpio at just about 15 degrees, so 14 degrees and 58 minutes. Let's look at the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is ruled by two planets. Its ancient ruler is Mars and the modern ruler is Pluto. Ruled by Mars, this brings determination, energy, action and willpower to the sign of Scorpio. OK, 
okay? And ruled by Pluto brings intensity, a lot of depth, some sexuality, sensuality, some extremes like a great much of something or a great absence of something and sometimes even obsessive qualities and obsession can be a positive thing if it's directed positively and Pluto is also about transformation death or complete loss and then rebirth like the phoenix rising from the ashes and that goes even more so when there is a lunar eclipse the element of Scorpio is water in the sign of Cancer water is cardinal it's like a river flowing going in a direction and in Pisces the water element is almost like the waves going swishing swishing in and out in Scorpio the element of water is deep and still water still waters run deep so Scorpio with this element of water is about deep emotion hidden depths there's intuition and there's sensitivity. The modality of Scorpio is fixed and that comes with that stillness of the water. Okay, And with that depth that Scorpio has, it can be seen as a mysterious sign. It's about the subconscious realms, deep psychology, and also about the occult. So subjects like astrology fit in really well with Scorpio. And if you can imagine yourself falling into that depth, like when you're looking into water, can you feel the magnetism? Like you almost want to just dive in and immerse yourself and go into that underworld. And a person with strong Scorpio energy can be a bit like that. There's a magnetism about them. Scorpio is all about hidden depths and hidden layers of meaning and deep intuition. Whereas Taurus is about what is on the surface. So the moon is in Scorpio, the sun is opposite in the sign of Taurus, two sides of the same coin. So with Taurus, where the sun is, we have the tangible, what can be seen, touched, tasted and sensed with our skin, with the uh, outward senses of our body. So Taurus is about uh, actual material pleasures, material items, resources and money. So both of them are to do with wealth because Scorpio can be about also great wealth, hidden wealth, investments, whereas Taurus is about like our daily money and what we actually have in terms of the resources that we can see and feel and are aware of all the time. If you already know your astrological chart, you will be aware of where you have that Taurus and Scorpio axis. But if you don't know your chart, be aware that you do have that in there. So you will have your area of life that is ruled by Taurus, where you are practical, you're steady, you're involved with the tangible things of life, the things that you can touch and feel and taste, and you might enjoy material luxuries in that area. And then you will also have your Scorpio side, where you have got hidden depths, really, really deep feelings that only the people who really know you might ever see, and in that part of your life, you might undergo some transformations where you just have like very painful endings and then you arise again renewed. It can also be an area where you have investments, as I said before. So it's uh, hidden things like hidden wealth. At the time of the full moon, take a moment to step back and review what has been achieved, what has come to a culmination point in the last two weeks since the new moon or in the last six months since we had the new moon in Scorpio. Okay, so the full moon is a time of completion, a time to give gratitude and to review things. We also have heightened energy and emotion at the time of the full moon and things can be revealed that were hidden. And of course, as I mentioned before, we need to integrate those opposites of Taurus and Scorpio. And of course, this is a full moon eclipse, so that has extra energy, extra intensity and extra power in the endings, especially because this is in Scorpio, which is an intense sign anyway. So let's look at the other energies going on with the full moon. I'm going to talk about, again, the lunar eclipse and just show it where it is on the chart. Mercury in retrograde, Pluto now in retrograde and Jupiter moving forward very shortly. 
So there we can see the sun and the moon opposite each other on the charts. And the moon is close to the south node. If you see that little symbol that looks like a wee cup with a curly top, that's the south node eclipse point. And this is all about endings. The south node is always about what we're leaving behind. And this is even more so the case because it's in the sign of Scorpio, which is intense. And it can be about great endings in one's life, transformation. Uh, and also because it's the last eclipse in Scorpio that we're going to have for nine years. We've had a phase of the last year and a half of eclipses in Scorpio. And the reason why it's not as strong an eclipse as some of them is because, as you can see, the moon is at 14 degrees and the south node is only at 3 degrees. So there's about 11 degrees between them, which is quite a, a bit of space. Nevertheless, it's still a pretty powerful eclipse for all the other reasons. A lunar eclipse brings endings. This might be an internal change where you just decide one day that is the end of something for me, a relationship, a job, an association with a group of people or an organization, a hobby. You want to suddenly decide you're going to move house, whatever it is. Or it can come from external circumstances. But whether it's internal or external, there can be a feeling of karma or fate or and like there's no going back. So even if it's internally, you do have a choice but it might be a very strong feeling and even if you think oh gosh I really should keep this job because it's got all these good tick points about it but if you're really feeling inside that it's time to move on really that's not going to change the ending is there so now I'm talking about Mercury retrograde as I'm recording this it's a day after Mercury came into conjunction with the Sun so that's kind of the halfway point of the retrograde period the three-week period and Mercury is still in retrograde until the 15th of May. And you can see Mercury there on that little part of the chart, which is in green with a wee R beside it. And then the sun is the round circle with the dot in the red. So Mercury will be appearing to go backwards in the sky until the 15th. And this means in this time that we need to be revising things and correcting errors that we've made in the last while. And accepting that we can't move forward really fast with things at the moment. That's just the way it is for three weeks at a time or so, three times a year. Mercury is all about our thinking processes, our sense of logic, our analysis, our arrangements that we make in our work life and our personal lives. So communications can get mixed up along the way over that three week period. And that's okay, it's time to review things. Also a good one to review at the time of Mercury retrograde for personal reasons is your self talk. Are you, <laughs> am I, I need to tell myself this as well. We need to be reminding ourselves that when we're going into those ruts of negative thinking to bring it back to the positive, yes, I can be wealthy. Yes, I can live a life of abundance. Yes, I have lots of love in my life instead of some of those negative patterns that we've developed over the years. And now talking about Pluto, an exciting planet for this year because of its ingress into the sign of Aquarius for the first time in over 200 years. I will link in the description a video I've done about Pluto moving into Aquarius and the Pluto generations in New Zealand. And you might see it floating around above me somewhere if I can figure out how to do a link there. Anyway, Pluto has got as far as zero degrees of 21 minutes of Aquarius and it's now turned retrograde and that means it's going to head back into Capricorn to finish off some of its work in Capricorn. Pluto will be moving back into Capricorn on the 11th of June so for now and at the time of the lunar eclipse it is at zero degrees of Aquarius. This is an important point. It was the point of the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn at the end of 2020 and that was the end of you know that crazy year when COVID first came in and things went surreal and that year was caused by at the beginning of 2020 there was the conjunctions between Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter 
in January of that year and then kicked off also in March of that year when we went into lockdown and all that. So we had that slow and still year with these weird things happening and all these changes and the world not being the same as we know it now. And then at the very end of 2020, on December the 21st, the summer solstice here in the southern hemisphere, Saturn and Jupiter came together. That's a once in 20 year transit on zero degrees of Aquarius. And this was setting up a new world that we're going into. Lots of other parts and signs to do with the new world, but that was a really important conjunction there. And Pluto turning retrograde on this very same point is interesting because when a planet turns retrograde, especially a very slow moving planet like Pluto, that adds focus and intensity to that point. Anyway, we shall see. Pluto is going to go back into Capricorn and it's going to do some more of the stuff that it does in Capricorn. We're going to get more of that centralized power and tradition and conservative values coming through but then eventually in the next couple of years it's going to be back in Aquarius for the next 20 years and we're going to see more of the people seeking to do grassroots communities and devolved power. More about that in my video about Pluto if you want to look at it. Think about over the last couple of months since March when Pluto went into Aquarius have you noticed anything that goes along with that Aquarian theme of humanitarian ideals, equal opportunities for everyone, egalitarianism and power being spread across the masses and across the people rather than top-down control? The other day I was with some friends at a dinner party and we were all talking about how could we set up communities that would work where we were sharing resources, growing food together and we were talking about all the problems that would get in the way that would make it not work. And we need to talk about those because we need to come up with solutions. What I wonder is if we're going to get started on some of that more practically and more realistically and concretely once Pluto's finished its journey through Capricorn over the next year and a half or so and moved into Aquarius more steadily if we all start to see the way through to make those things possible and those ideas come to actual fruition. So for yourself think about some ideas that you've had over the last little while since March and even before that since that great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn last year especially with Neptune and Pisces there were so many wild and crazy and dreamlike ideas coming out this is time to be thinking about how to put them into concrete action and exploring ways to solve some of the problems involved with making that reality. And finally, Jupiter moving into Taurus on the 17th of May. That's coming up. Exciting for all the people with strong Taurus in your chart because Taurus, you have had a rough ride over the last year and a half. You've had the eclipses, you've had Uranus. I know some people with Taurus Ascendant, oh my goodness, they've had so many wild changes in their lives. With Jupiter coming into your sign, which only happens every 12 years, and it will stay there for roughly a year, you're going to have some blessings come your way, because Jupiter brings opportunity and luck and a sense of expansiveness and optimism. So yay for Taurus energy, I'm so pleased for you about that. So Jupiter it kind of looks like that big four with a curly top. You can see it there. It's at 27 degrees of Aries, getting closer to that 29 degree mark and then zero of Taurus. Yeah, so with Taurus, Jupiter is going to be bringing expansiveness to things that, to do with the tangible gifts of the earth, resources, the practical considerations of life, what we eat, and the things that we need to live, money, and also material pleasures and luxuries. So nice to think of that Jupiter blessing coming into that area. Things to think about this full moon. So it's the full moon, eclipse or not, at full moon it's a time to pause and review and look around what has reached a culmination. What are you grateful for in your life? Where can you feel 
oh wow yes I have that I did that my friends did that for me my family did that for me my loved ones are here for me what are you grateful for and with this eclipse and Scorpio and full moons anyway it is time to let go of something and with Scorpio you might need to have the laser focus of that ruru there what do you need to let go of and look at even dispassionately and realize it is time to move on and allow the time to grieve and do that letting go process properly with Scorpio we have the opportunity for transformation and it comes through deep psychological work our shadow work and especially with the eclipse it could be a good opportunity to do past life regression or inner child work where you are getting down 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 below the layers to some deep stuff in the root chakra and in the uh, brain stem that is things that could be driving you and belief systems that could be driving you that don't serve you some of that deep transformative work or even counseling or journaling whatever works for you that could be helpful and now speaking more about the practical and the surface level again in the sign of Taurus with the Sun and the full moon opposite <laughs> we have mercury retrograde and that is making us need to look back at things more on a daily life level now practical things arrangements plans that go all right where do we need to fix up our errors just take care dot your i's cross your t's and notice what needs to be fixed up and just get on and do it because that's the nature of mercury retrograde there we go everyone that is my video about the lunar eclipse in the sign of scorpio my name is fiona of sun and moon calendar.nz if you'd like to leave a comment i invite you to share a story about changes of energy with astrology especially if you've noticed something with the solar eclipse that we had at 29 degrees of aries two weeks ago and this upcoming lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio has there been some kind of change that's come into your life that's felt fated or karmic or destined in some way even if it was a small thing that might lead to something big in future anyway all the best I hope that the eclipse goes well for you enjoy that Saturday morning and if anyone actually sees a shadow over the moon please let us know Kakite anō hekonara.